to ensure that, that all that goes smoothly, a listing on the stock exchange ensures that we have the financial strength and ability to, to achieve our aspirations. I think these, these last two months are more important than the other six or seven that have gone because it's now that our fate sorted out, really. We just hope at the end of the day it comes off right, which I'm pretty sure it will. Eh? Pretty confident we'll, we'll pull through. Grace! Come on! Fucking come on! Arsenal are going to be in the Premiership. It's the first season they've gone up. Can they sustain? You know, can they can they keep themselves in the Premiership this season? Um, because there's a history that a lot of clubs that are promoted um, are relegated the following season. To be honest, all season I've never been totally confident. I mean, you know, beginning of the season we won a few matches and whatnot. I was, you know, thought, oh, we'll do all right here. You know, we'll fi finish mid-table. And then they've just been thrown stupid win like leads away in playing boring matches, nil-nil draws where they should have won against the likes of Leicester, West Ham, stuff like that. You know, Sunderland should have won, re really. I mean, they weren't outclassed or anything. And, uh, I mean, but then again, we went on to beat Man United on the following Saturday, so it's football, it's just, you can never tell. There were now only five games to go till the end of the season. And although Sunderland hadn't played a game for ten days, other people's results had gone against them. Out of 20 teams in the Premier League, Sunderland were now down in the bottom three places, the relegation zone. Best team in the world, Sunderland. Best supporters in the world. Hey, did you see the results yesterday? Ah, oh, yes, I did. But uh, Southampton, well, once we beat them here, you see, that'll be OK. After we finish these off, did you? All right, and then we'll get Middlesbrough next, and then we'll get Southampton. So did you wake up nervous this morning? Well, I, yeah, I have been for a while, like, yeah. Uh, it was th I'm very keyed up at the minute, like, but uh, I think we'll be all right. I've decided now to relax and enjoy the football. <laughs> I think we'll be all right. That's <laughs> great, thank you. Top of Morning. 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 What do you think? 1-0. Right. We'll do. Do you <laughs> What do you mean to? Uh... <laughs> OK. I think it... the results that have gone haven't gone clever. I mean, we haven't won since United. Even though I thought we'd play well in games and haven't really... You know, we've gone 1-0 up against Forest and Newcastle and haven't really got the second that kills teams off. And uh, three points at this stage now is crucial. I think the morale's there and the spirit's there, but we just need to get results now. Out of the next five games, Peter's hometown team, Liverpool, were by far the toughest challenge. But let's not forget, Sunderland had beaten league heavyweights, Manchester United and Arsenal, when they played them here at Roker Park. A win wasn't impossible. <laughs> I've been on since like 1964. We've been up and down, up and down, you know. And it's one of them things I just pray for. I'm not saying a miracle, but you know, hope. That's all. And 
it's not for the lack of endeavour, you know, but you've got to have skill as well, haven't you? Difficult to come back from two games, but we we got in there for it. And our second, like I said, second half, I was delighted with it. But um, first half, we were a little bit sensitive. How frustrating is it to keep on putting in good performances and not getting any reward? We're in the bottom three, and the most important thing is, at the end of the season, not to be in the bottom three. So we've got to get results. You need the. I mean, I'd rather play crap and get a result. Yeah, it's a big game on. Saturday against. Well, they're all big games, to be perfectly honest, but yeah, it's a, it's a local derby and it will be a, a big game. During the week, you think about, you think, oh, who, who are we playing on Saturday? Oh, we've got to win this. You look at the tables during the week. I mean, you look at them over and over again and think, oh, if we get three points here, if we get a point there, we'll be safe. And you analyse it and you, you just want your team to stay up so much. I am very, very disappointed where we are, but if, like, if I get down about it, I mean, you know, there's always got to be. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, you know, this and that, but there's always, you've always got to. I mean, we can't affect what's happened. That's gone. That's history. I can affect what's coming on. If I'm down, and I think it's harder to affect the players, and that's why we try and keep it bubbly. We don't want any time the other day. All right, Fowler, McManaman, good feet. You don't. If if like Ravenelli, sometimes he'll come past these. Some games, when it don't go right, it goes all wrong, then you have to forget about it. There's nothing you can do about it. You plan for the next one. We try to come in with a positive attitude on a Monday morning or a, or a Wednesday morning or whatever it is after the, after the night before. So when they come in, get up their fucking arse, straight up their arse. Let's go! Go steady on the tackling! If you keep the players ticking over that way, where they enjoy the training, they look forward to coming in. Um, because it is important, that's very, very important. Then, then, by and large, good players, top class players, motivate themselves. You, know, you might have to put the odd little bang on, you know, clap their hands and this, that, and the other, but if you have to keep jumping on the table or banging the table every other game, then you ain't got the right type of players. Go on! Go on! Go on! Go on! Go on! 99% of footballers want to get on, they want to do well, want to win games. Some, yeah, you're going to get some that can't be bothered again. That's just life, isn't it? But no, you, we always have our own expectations. We always want to do well, we always want to win. Sometimes you're not good enough to do that and it's difficult to accept because you want to be the best at your profession. But if you're not the best at it, you can only be as good as you can be. There's more pressure to win because there's more money involved. You know, it's so much like a business now as opposed to a game. Each, each club is run as a business, and winning is the ultimate prize in that business because everybody wants to know winners, you know, and that's what generates money. Because of the team's poor performance, season ticket sales for the new 42,000-seater stadium had ground to a halt. With the average First Division weekly attendance being only half that amount, Chairman Bob Murray was forced to consider the impact relegation would have on his plans. I'm absolutely petrified about it. It's been in my mind since the minute we laid a brick last May. I mean, I've been living with this for 11 and a half months. What division will we be in when that stadium opens in August? What we're asking them to do is to, is to encourage somebody else to... An ad agency was called in to produce a new marketing campaign, 
but under Bob's orders, no one was allowed to use the R word. It's not the can't, can't they could only be scenarios A or B. Scenario A, we think, takes care of itself. So we would like to take account of scenario B as we work through the agenda. Right. Our view is that the creative approach that we have at the moment for the poster sites is, is appropriate to uh, scenario B. In other words, that we're not saying anything that's particularly um, inflammatory. And in fact, it's about the excitement of the stadium as opposed to the performance of the team. So our view would be to stick with it and just go with, go with the plan. We're going to look at the billboard now as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got fever pitch. Better. So much better. We've changed the font. It's not an Achilles heel adopting no. these messages. No, I'm just asking no, stupid questions. I mean, why, no, why, why, no. why do we put here we go? Is it, why don't we say how we are? Because it's in the bus. Oh, Hawaii. Why don't we say Hawaii? Hawaii is very northeast, and okay, it's also football, but it, it may be perceived as just Hawaii as a general statement, and it's not quite as close to we are going to a new stadium, which away we go. <laughs> Can I just say something? I don't think we should have here we go either, because here we go down. Someone I've, will pick I've, it up. I've never liked that one. Here we go. We're going yeah, down again. Chip in, you know. All right, here we go. We're I think, going down. I think you made a valid point, Bob, about having the stadium. I mean, I, I know you're not going to see much of it, but it's, it's just a Debbie little, a little you reminder. Know, if, it's, if it's going to be anything, I think it should be away the lads because mm -hmm. that that makes it more stadium. football than just. Not. It's in yeah. the seats. Away the lads. New, new stadium, new season, new stadium season ticket. That's right. Can we think of how we? How do you say how we? Tunland, H A, H A, is it? Is it not how how we? I mean, ask Yorkie, so I'll have to have it spelt for us. H A, apostrophe, apostrophe. apostrophe. It's the only place to be the Premier League. It is for a player. It is for a chairman. It is for a manager. It's the only place to be where it matters, where it happens. It's much easier for me to go to Arsenal than it is to go to South End. It's much easier much more enjoyable you know this, this club needs to compete at the highest level and it needs to compete seriously eventually and it needs to compete permanently not your yo your in these last weeks it was as if time was standing still the future of Sunderland lay in a very delicate balance and everyone outside and inside the club spent their days trying to predict the next results Sunderland Everton Sunderland. Sunderland, Southampton. Draw. Wimbledon, Sunderland. Draw. And your prediction. Forest down on 34, Southampton down on 39, Middlesbrough. Coventry and Sunderland on 40 points. So different. I think it would probably do us good sometimes to be a bit more dispassionate about the football. If we could think... Oh, well, if you could switch yeah. off when yeah, I'm just if, if we lost and think, oh, well... Um, because people do say, oh, you know, what do you, what do you think, how do you think it'll go? So, you know, um, and we have, to, we have to be positive. We have to say, oh, I'm completely confident that we'll stay up. And, and I am, because if for one second... I thought we moved to a 42,000 seat stadium in the first division. Gosh, that's just, that's, well, like I said, it's sleepless nights forever. Wish I had a time machine. Like working for a football club, you can't influence what, you know, the actual outcome. You can influence how well the clubs run, whatever, but you can't influence the, the actual finished product. If the team went out there and won the next three games, brilliant. That seems fantastic. And I mean, you could see the change of that. We could play tomorrow, win, play Tuesday, win, and it would look like completely different. Yeah. But somebody else may do something different as well, so one game could change it all, and it might not be one we're playing in. Although Middlesbrough is a local town, 
The night before the match, Peter took the team to an exclusive hotel to strengthen morale and keep the players focused on the game. Hi, you chicken, how are you? Are you? I'm at a hotel, I'm going playing football. Who do I play for? What team do I play for? Good girl. Okay then, look after Michael, look after baby Michael, won't you? Okay, bye, bye. No, I did that, didn't I? So all the old days go. Oh, oh he's a nice man, that Niall Quinn. Sitting <laughs> he's talking to his baby before the game. <laughs> I got a good one. We were playing cards on the away trip one Friday night. And the phone went and she said, uh, there's a mouse in the kitchen. And I was 300 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't go in the kitchen until I came back on the Sunday, on the, well, Saturday night, late Saturday night. And that was Friday night. And I had to go in and get the mouse out of the kitchen. <laughs> and my wife usually says, who, who are you playing today? <laughs> That's what I usually get. This had been an extraordinary season for Neighbours Middlesbrough. They'd spent millions on international stars, they'd reached two cup finals and lost, and now found themselves only two points and four places above Sunderland. Both clubs faced the fear of relegation. This was a big game for both of them. It's three points I'd say against Borough. Let's let's get them three points, you know. But Rob will be saying that to his lads. He'll, he'll have his lads fired up. I mean, me and him go way, way, way back. Mid seventies when when he was at West Brom and I was at Bow. And he's possibly one of my best friends in football. So that that tells you what the industry's like. You know, you want to put one over on your mate, and he wants to do the same to you. We'll have a beer before, then we'll have a beer afterwards. And one of the was a big crime of probably the other one will be happy. Sunderland went up to 16th place and Middlesbrough are now one place below them. For once, Sunderland supporters could gloat. The fans were nervous, you could, you could tell the players were nervous. Um, the second half, the crowd got behind them a little bit and Sunderland started playing some good football. We scored and just the, you know, the sense of relief, please, you know, let us hang on. I just couldn't stand it. I was up and down, didn't know, you know, where to go. I was up and down the toilet, and um, when the final whistle went, I did shed a few tears. And I think a lot of people, even a lot of lads and men that I know, they, they were exactly the same. After the game, we, we went for a few pints, me, Rafi, and Glenn again, and we said, "Oh, we're going to have a look at the new stadium. You know, we're going to see it like and we're, we're, we're pretty tipsy out here. So you get up on the fences round, you know. I was tossing down with rain. We said, "Oh, we'll have to go and find our new seat." So we couldn't get out of the fence, Bob, why not? So we fins all in the fence and we get in. We walk through six inches of mud and clots. So anyway, we get around this corner and this big, big light comes shining on us, you know. We're like, hey, look, where is this? And he's a security guard with his dog, you know. He caught us, like, but we sat down and the concrete bench thing, we having to be crap them, you know, and he was okay, like, you know. He might get round to this now, then, but 
It's just when you've had a few drinks and you're celebrating, that's the type of thing you do, isn't it, you know? I don't think there's anything else, you know, in, in life that, that, that motivates or, or can affect people as much as football. It's, it's, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. And I think the non-football people, it's very difficult for people to, to come to terms that, that, that how, how, it, how it can be so emotional, but, but it is. You see that, you, you see that all, all the time. You really do, and particularly in the northeast, as we've said, it's uh, it's it's a bit intense to say the least. <laughs> oh, fantastic! I've no voice sat tonight. Absolutely brilliant. The lads played great. Wonderful goal, mind. So do you reckon any of these patterns have been more lucky for you than anything else? Then the circles was the ones that was the winning ones. <laughs> But we'll keep finding him away a bit like sometimes we'll cross the boxes. We haven't this time, we went around, just made it a bit different. I think the lads like it that way as well, so I don't think we've lost on circles. <laughs> uh, the corner, corner the corner was I think was a, a flop, you know, we got beat there like so we didn't do them again. <laughs> oh, we'll be trying, try a few more in the new stadium, work a few checks out. as well, isn't there? Oh aye, there's checks, so I I like the checks like, but uh, there's there's all sorts. Several ones. The pressure will not be off the players because they'll be trying for three wins. I know that for a fact, like. So will the gaffer. We'll not let them give in yet, like. It leaves us on 42. So West Ham on 42. Borough, Forest, Southampton on 39. So that leaves us one place above relegation. Should the rest of our results come true. And for tonight. But I've been through and I've changed some more as well. I've done some more worst case scenarios because we were we were much further up than that, so I put a few more wins in for everyone below us. This is a, assuming that we win against Southampton tonight. We don't go down. In everyone's prediction, this was a safe three points. Southampton were below Sunderland in the league, and Sunderland were playing at home. But with only these three games to go, no one could afford to make mistakes. If we win it, we fucking stay up. We're going to win it and we're going to stay up. Come on, get out there, do what you did, Sati. It fucking goes out the window. Goes out the window. And I'll tell you something now, if it's fucking tight, hey, don't fucking take chances. Get a point, we've got two more games. But attitude-wise, we go out to win the game, we go out to win tackles. Fuck it, come on, let's go. I've got to be careful. I mean, shall I risk winning today? Shall I leave it? Shall I do this? I mean, shall I leave Darius out and play Mickey left back? I mean, they're all big decisions, like, you know, I've got a good squad of players here, and so it's like any other manager, unfortunately, you can play, you know, just play 11. It's up to me to make that decision. Right, there's no room with turning them. Hey, get them turned. Fuck that. Over the top. Come on, hey! Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on! It is great. It is great, and it's every time you walk out on the park and, and the referee blows that whistle, boom, your, your decisions, your... Opinions on the game are there. Media. Come on! One there! One there! Catch it! One side he wanted to fucking win it, and it was fucking embarrassing. They were quicker to every ball, they were winning tackles. This fucking Berkovic making fucking tackles to win them. So get your fucking asses in gear, have a bit. Hey, I don't give a fuck about losing, but I tell you what, I give a fuck about losing shite. Not fucking having a go, not wanting to fucking get up people's asses. Get it fucking done. Have the bollocks to get the ball, pass it. If she did in the last 15 minutes, why does it take us fucking half an hour to get going? Fucking get it sorted out. Fucking have the responsibility. Fucking get up his ass. I could fucking play out there in their fucking side. It's that much fucking room. Get it fucking sorted. I think the 
pressure being out there. I wouldn't like to go out with as many hopes and aspirations on my shoulders. When you want so much for the club and the new stadium and everything that the club's doing. It's hard, it's hard when you know it can be affected. You couldn't describe that if something didn't go down. It's just the same as what it did for Sunderland when we got promoted last season. It's just like a shared emotion that the whole city feels and all the supporters feel. Come on, Ray, it's time! It's about some minister. <laughs> In one leap, Southampton moved to three places above Sunderland, who were left in 18th position, with only Nottingham Forest and Middlesbrough below them. Two to go. Six points. That's what we need. If we do that second, what well, we did second half, it wouldn't be a problem. Disappointing, but come on. Let's just get in the back. Right, all the predictions everyone said about Southampton should win that. At home. You can't afford to lose to a team below you at this stage of the season. Um, it just means that if we'd have gone to Middlesbrough and lost, that would have been a real disaster. And if we'd have won this, I've always felt we've still got a chance, but because it's the other way around, I think, well, when you've got two games, it's running out of games. We still stay up, but it's the manner of it, the, the attacks. And... Yeah, just bad result for us, might possibly. I might have picked the wrong team. But after half an hour, we've worked hard, created chances. We ain't gone in for us. We go back a long way. He used to kick me and I used to kick him. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> chance would be a fine thing. England and Ireland. Oh, so we're playing an England Scotland game at Wembley. <laughs> That's true, this time. I'd see it. The ball broke and he was going for it first and I fucking clattered into him. And I, you know, the ball's going to follow the ball. And as I'm running back towards Morgan, I'm thinking, there's no way that he's going to get up from that. So there's something happens, the ball goes out of play, I turn round, and the little bastard's like this, scowling at me, I'd tackle, jogging. I'd and I thought, you know, you know when you, it's one of when you hit something and you feel your whole body weight behind it. <laughs> and he got up and jogged on it. Uh, time to go. Best of luck. Soon to you. Hopefully we've got it to the Hopefully. Good luck. Keep taking All the results went against Sunderland, and you're sitting in the car and you're thinking, we've, what are we going to do? We're going to go down. And you, you are, you're devastated. You just can't describe how unhappy it makes you feel. And then you mope around the house, say, for a bit, and it does, it affects you a lot. I think now he's, he's coming on the press. I mean, I don't know the man, but I think he seems quite cocky. He seems quite blasé about everything. I'll do it how my way, you know, it's like it or lump it, and I think people are getting a bit sick of it now. These supporters uh, are desperate for success, and I can understand that. I mean, I was, I was a supporter. I used to support stand on the cop, me. And like if they got beat, the manager and the players were useless. But hey, because you, you you care, and that's I'd rather have that. It's a it's a passion, and um, I mean we were going for promotion. Now was Jack the Ladle, which we've had. Now it's it's a different kettle of fish. But they've always been behind me. Obviously not. I mean you won't have everyone who thinks you're great, or you think you're making a, a job of it, and that's that, that's life. But um, I certainly I certainly enjoy my job here, and I certainly. I've got a feeling, I've got a, the supporters have been brilliant to me, you know, and they're a big part of this football club. Well, they are the football, it's their football club. I'm just the manager of it. And when I'm dead and gone, Sunderland supporters will still be here. I know it sounds crap, but that's the way it is. Well, it doesn't sound crap, it's spot on.
After the, um, the win against Middlesbrough, we were all on a high, and then it sort of ruined it, you know, the result that we got, having gotten a bad result against Southampton. And really, I mean, we battered them for most of the game. Well, that's how it goes sometimes, I suppose. It sort of affects everything you do when you don't get the right results. The manager just said to, that to keep your heads up that we'd played well and, you know, it wasn't the time really to start getting depressed and worrying about it because we deserved to win the game and this, that and the other. But it's very hard, isn't it? The game is massive for us on Saturday now against Everton, you know, it's probably the most important game that Sunderland have had for a good few years. The Everton game was also going to be the last ever league match played at Roker Park. It was going to be an emotional end to a monumental season. You know, I first came to Roker Park in, in 1958, when I was seven years old. That's Peter Reid on the front, by the way. That was one of his very early games for Bolton Wanderers. It was 1976, they say. There we go. That's it in the rotor end. <laughs> that black hair then. <laughs> the start as a boy in, in the boy's end, which was at the front of the rotor end. Then as you get a little bit older, you used to, you know, move around the rotor end. And then as you, you become a big boy, as it were, and uh, looking for the, the real atmosphere, you then progress into the full end. And that, that's, that, that's what I did. So um, what do you get in the full end that you don't get in the rocker end? Then? Uh, well, maybe I shouldn't say it, but in, I can remember in, in the late uh, in, in, in the late sixties, early seventies, you used to get a bit of aggro in there, you know. And then when you get too old for that, you go back in the rocker end, and that's just what I did. Then when I get too old for the rocker end, and you get a little bit money, you go into the seats. So that's the. I, I'm sure I'm no different than many thousands of people that have followed that uh, followed that path. Well, oh, you've gone uh, further in the seats, haven't you? Yes, a little bit further in the seats. I've, I've got the, the centre seats now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, we'll go. All right. I'll put this in the top corner. There we go. I told you, didn't I? What was on to do that? The atmosphere here is just... Oh, it's fantastic, like... And being a support, you can't explain. I mean, in 73, when we played Man City here, and Vic Hallaman then was playing, he scored a goal from just off the centre line at the top. And uh, there was a chap in front of me and he turned around, he was actually crying. He'd be, he was getting on a good age. And he says, I've dreamed this. He says, we're going to win three to one. And he says, we're going to go to the final. I says, I hope so. And he put his arms around us and he hugged us. You know, and it's things like that. You look around, there was old people crying. And the atmosphere was electric like, you know. You miss the crack, you know, when, when you're sitting in seats, you know, you sell when you score. You know, everybody jumps up and you're each other and that's all part of it. When you're in all seaters, you, you can't really do that, you know. I'll miss, probably miss the cold, you know, you, you think you're not, but you probably miss the winter where you, you know, you're shivering a bit and wrapped up in that, you know. Obviously, you're in the seats where you're, you're roofing that round, it's going to be warmer and stuff. I think people will be upset to see it go, but you know, you've got to make the transition, you've, you've got to change to a new stadium, because it's all dilapidated really now, Roker Park. Oh, the end of the season meant it was time for the annual ritual, the Supporters Club Player of the Year Award. We haven't gotten as many on the night as what we thought we would, um, and that's all down to how the team's playing at the time. I mean, usually we have about 300, uh, there'll probably be about 180 here, so it reflects on how the supporters feel at the time. And how are you yeah. holding out the season? I'll tell you that after the Everton game on Saturday. It's emotional, honestly. It really is. I don't want to leave Roper Park, but I think uh, fate has it where we, uh, we Mouth Colliery is the best site, you know, um, and it's just... I don't know, I just get emotional as soon as I talk about it. It's just going to be awful. I think the Everton game being the last league game, that's when it's going to affect everybody. When you, you, mean, when you say you're emotional, what way do you mean you're emotional? Oh, I could cry. The Southern Football Club Player of the Year 
Well, one could say he leads by example. You don't need to say any more. It's Kevin Ball. You live with other people's expectations because at the end of the day, when you go out onto that pitch, you're carrying technically hundreds of thousands of supporters, expectations and wants and wills and wishes on your back. But it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing, because that's their support to you. They're saying they want you to go out and do well, they want you to win for their team. And as long as they can see you go out there and give your best, I've never known one supporter to turn around and criticise a player for that. Um, there's not a lot we can say at the moment. Last year it was sort of a, a lot more celebrations. We had a great night last year. Obviously a lot of uh, fun and games and that, because obviously winning the championship. Uh, this, to me now, is more important the next two games and that. Um, I, like Michael, firmly believe we will stay up. I'd like to thank you for your backing this year. It's been tremendous as always. Saturday's game is of mammoth proportion, so important. It's unbelievable. We'd just like to hear you roar as loud as possible as you can this Saturday and away to Wimbledon next Sunday. And then let's hope together that we, uh, we stay in the Premiership because that's where this club belongs. Thanks again for your support. <laughs> A lot of uh, atmosphere there today, I would think. A lot of sudden faces, probably as well. Although, if we win, they, they would still be sad, like, because you know they're not coming here. But it's a new area. We need a new stadium for the club to advance to the top, which we want. The club's big enough to be at the top and uh, get some good players in, success, and we'll be laughing. Have you done anything different with the pitch today, Tommy? You said you hadn't lost on circles. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll, we'll have now. <laughs> No, no more circles. There'd been some important games played here over the last 99 years, but this one was about as big as it gets. And it was ironic that Sunderland were playing against Peter's old club. So when was that? Everton won. Tuesday the 4th of September. We won the title that year. Peter brings him up. I've known Peter since, since I was a young lad. And he's, yeah. wait, how many games, how many grounds and games are you watching? Oh, <laughs> Every ground in the country you'll see him at. He's got that one from Bolton, which October the 12th, 74, only full league debut. Game of football, go and enjoy. You know there's a lot of on it, but fucking go and enjoy it. All the best, Gaffer. All the best. All the best, All the best. All the best. All Enemies. Fucking, I mean, you could, I know they've got Barbies coming in the old, Thompson's staying there, and sometimes we get phone numbers. Now, what you do, as a back four, you wake them up, 
Keep working on condense the pitch when they've got the ball. Hey, when you've got when you've had it, relax on it. Don't hey, if it's fucking not on, come out and go on the other side. Just do that. I'm not asking you to do anything you can't do. Just keep the ball. When you've kept the ball there, it's smashing. But it's like it's a fucking hot potato. Fucking relax. The only thing that can happen is you get fucking beat. So fucking what? Ain't a fucking problem as long as you go out there and you relax. You're working your bollocks off and you're doing everything we want. But relax on the football. I mean, relax on it. Have the confidence to fucking just get out. If it's not on, down the side, come out. Just keep the football. That's it. If you keep the football, you win the game. Honestly, you win the fucking game. Hey! Relax! Pass it! There's no one up there! Pass it! After all Sunderland had gone through this season, it looked like they were going to leave their old ground in style. There was hardly a dry eye in the house, and no one was going home until they'd seen the team one last time. This was a strange moment. Deep down, the team knew that over the last few weeks they'd let the supporters down, but today they'd done them proud. Now everyone wanted to savour the moment. They wanted to celebrate something that was bigger than any one season. memorable occasion today there's been a lot of emotion I think we've all probably taken a few minutes out certain times this afternoon and reflected on the times past good and bad because as Sunderland fans we, we've had both um, I first came to Roper Park as a seven-year-old in 1958 and uh, it's it's tremendous to think of all the, the, the fantastic memories that we've had over those years and and probably think probably more importantly of the one or two supporters who are no longer with us and I do know that a lot of people have uh, had people that's passed on in, the, in their thoughts today. Um, the result today was what we wanted, tremendous result. Um, our object this season is of course to stay in the Premiership. We're still there, we're still fighting. Well, the results could have gone better for us today but we'll, we'll be there next week and I do know we'll have a tremendous following. I do believe that this club is entering a new era We've got a tremendous new stadium to go to next season and I look forward sincerely to seeing you all there and supporting the team as you've always done. Thank you very much.
and down at the bottom. Middlesbrough, a winner, 10 seconds from time, from the penalty spot, keeping their hopes lingering. Oh, they do no. have games in hand on the sides above them. Coventry, beaten at home today by Derby County, find themselves back in the bottom three. Sunderland used their final game at Roca Park to beat Everton 3-0 and climb out of the relegation zone. I need us to be in the Premiership. I want to go and watch a football team that are playing the best teams in the land, that can attract the best footballers. From a football, from a football side of it, that's what I want. Once you're down, I mean, the club, the other clubs you're playing, it's just not the same as being in the Premier League. I mean, I've, I've watched First Division football before and it's just not that exciting. This had been a painful season, but Sunderland had nearly reached the end. With only one more game to go, the team would soon know its fate. But as all supporters know, disappointment is something you can cope with. It's the lingering hope that really hurts. I was top man last year, you know, pats on the back, and I, I loved it, great. So I've got to accept what comes with if we go down, but I think we'll stay up and positive about it. Oh, yeah. The atmosphere is quite good, it's not tense, uh, training's quite good. I think that's, that's a telltale sign if everybody was um, at one another's throats and kicking each other and blaming each other for things, then we'd have a problem. Stick together out there, hey. Fucking get each other out of shit if we have to. Fucking look after each other like we have done for two fucking years. The local paper said last night that uh, we've had 104 Premier League games since 1984, and we've never won two in a row. We bought the shirts, we bought the bricks, we've shouted as loud as we can, and we need something to hang on to. And I, don't, I want to know how could we survive for 29 years? And they've got different managers, different chairmen, different players. They've survived 29 years. This club has not finished in the top half of the first division in 42 years. Well, that's right. I, I've had enough. Oh, yeah.